guys welcome back to another youtube video so got a very interesting kind of highly requested video to do today and it's all about the visa process when going to camp and this was something again that i stressed about like you wouldn't believe before my first summer at camp and even though your agencies send you loads of information over they do make it very straightforward i was still constantly thinking like questioning what was going to go wrong how it all worked everything like that so i'm here to put your minds at ease to do with visas all thing visas um applying for one the cost of one going to the actual embassy interview and then how long processing time takes and then how you get your visa back so yeah i am actually going to vlog my visa appointment i won't be able to vlog actually being in the embassy but i'm going to take you along for the day that i go down to london um kind of walk you through what to expect um how to get there as well i know obviously it's quite straightforward when you just put the address in your phones but i remember the first time i went it was such a faff because it's quite far out of london like it's not right in the city center you have to get a couple of trains like tubes over to it so yeah i thought i'd vlog that day and that is on mine's on the 21st of march that'll all be done then and just gives you a bit of an insight of what the day actually will look like, what to expect, what you can get done in your day. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, this video, I'm not going to ramble. Promise, I'm not. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to get straight into it. And I'll just start talking all things visas. So first up, I've had a lot of people ask me how long processing time takes after submitting your police check and how long it then take for you to get your visa papers over to you. And so for people, I'm not really sure. Obviously, everyone's going to be at a different stage with their application. I know a few people that are booked in to have their visa appointment. I know some people that are yet to have their papers arrive. Some people have got their papers but haven't applied and booked yet. Um, so whatever stage you're at is obviously perfectly fine. I know someone that applied for their visa as late as like May and managed to get to camp for June. So you're not in any rush at all. So don't worry if you're thinking, oh, I'm really far behind because you're not, honestly. So yeah, the police check is one of the first things you have to submit when doing your application. And I think this costs about £40. Um, and this is just to obviously cross-reference that you're not on any like criminal databases for any criminal convictions. So once you've had your police check certificate come back, you then need to upload it to your agency like document section, whoever you're with. Um, and then once they've got that and they've got all your other documents, everything's good to go. They will request for your visa documents to be released from the embassy in America. Um, and when you get these documents come through, they'll actually have been signed by a officer in America. Um, so they get signed there, they get sent over to your agency. They'll then send them over to you. And then once you've got them, you're all good to literally book your appointment. Um, the visa application process is very lengthy. Um, don't get me wrong, it is long. Um, and there's actually two parts to it. So once you've got your papers, the first thing you're going to do is then follow all the information. Honestly, UNAC especially, I know that every other agency will do this as well. They'll send a really extensive kind of like breakdown of how to apply. So yeah, they are really, really helpful in how to fill out your application. So don't worry, you're not complete on your own when you're doing it. Yeah, so the DS-60 or the DS-160, I can't remember which one it's called, um, is your lengthier application. It takes, I want to say, close to an hour, like between 40 minutes and an hour to actually complete. Um... And this is literally all your information. It'll be, it'll ask you about all your previous addresses, um, your five previous trips to America, um, loads of different things that they need to know on their end. And then once you've done that, you'll get sent a confirmation page and that's just something you need to then print out and take to your appointment. Again, you will get sent a checklist of things you need to take with you. So don't just be relying on everything I'm saying because you will have a complete list sent over. So don't stress about that. Once you've then had that confirmation, you'll there'll be like a really long number. It starts with AA and then it'll be your personal number. And then that's what you need to actually book your appointment. You can't book your visa appointment without doing this first application online. So once that's all done, you'll then be able to go to the embassy website and put your details in it's not anywhere near as long as a process because you've done the actual application already this is just you booking an appointment so yeah then you'll be able to book your appointment i'm pretty sure it costs around 160 pound i think it's about 200 and something dollars so it works out about 160 pound i have actually had some news that i don't think it's going to even matter to me but if you are someone that has held a j1 visa in the last 48 months you don't actually have to go to an appointment I didn't actually know this. Well, in my defence, this ruling only came about on Tuesday. Tuesday the... What day would Tuesday been? Tuesday the 15th of February, that came about. And apparently, if you already had an appointment booked before then, they don't advise for you to cancel it and try and sort it out a different way. So I'm just going to stick with my appointment. I'm going to go anyway, because like I say, I'd quite like to 
vlog the whole process because I know it'd be quite helpful for a lot of people to see. And I know by March, a lot of people won't have actually had their appointment yet because the busiest time I'm pretty sure was like April onwards. So yeah, um, it's not, it's just a bit frustrating that I could have just done it all online. So anyway, if you've done, if you have got a J1 visa in the past, you can just send all your documents online and they'll I, they'll be able to issue you a visa that way um i don't know if this is going to be something that they'll keep going for a few years maybe obviously once you attend an like an in-person interview whether they're in say for the next two or three years if you want to apply for a visa you can do it online um it would be a lot easier honestly because when you actually go to the embassy it's a very brief process like because obviously your whole application has been done online they just need to physically see you you have to have your fingerprints done and they just ask you a few questions but i'll touch on the embassy when i get there um but yeah so i don't know if that's gonna be something that they'll stick around doing but if you are someone that has had a visa in the last 48 months and you haven't applied yet you are able to do it a different way that you will again you'll be notified by your agency about all of this so don't stress too much but yeah so let's say you've gone through all your application you're booking your visa you do actually have to select um actually you don't have to you can pay extra to have your passport sent directly to you this is such an expensive payment i want to oh, watch me say this now and it's going to be completely wrong but i've never actually paid to have my passport delivered back after my visa appointment i've always gone to one of the courier places and picked them up but the only thing that's changed this year is the amount of locations that you can actually collect your passport from when i went there was one literally probably half an hour from birmingham so i used to go to that one and now they've scrapped a load of those places to pick up and there's only like four places in the country now i've got to go and get mine from manchester so but it just gives me an excuse to go and see my friends in manchester so i'm not too fussed but yeah you'll have to select a location you want to actually collect your passport from if you're not going to have it delivered honestly i'd recommend either it just depends if you want to spend a little bit of extra money and not have to go and collect it but collecting it is actually super straightforward anyway so it doesn't really matter which one you do so yeah say you've then got your visa appointment booked you're ready to go um please make sure you have all your documents to take again you will get sent a full checklist of things you need to take take everything camp related like i've mentioned this before in some of my videos i am such a stress head that i would rather take every single document i have knowing full well i haven't been asked to take it but i convince myself that someone be like right well we need to actually see your medical questionnaire that you filled out three months ago and they're not going to ask for that but if you're like me and you want to just have everything done and ready and so you just feel a little bit more relaxed going like you can't physically not have anything if you take everything with you but i'm going to try and not do that because it is a little bit silly um so yeah i'm pretty sure the only things you do need to take again don't quote me on this because it's very likely i've missed something out go off what your agency and as you book your appointment they will send you a checklist as well and they will say make sure you bring all of these documents to your appointment otherwise it can delay the process of you getting a visa so first thing you're obviously gonna need your passport don't forget your passport um you leave your passport at the embassy um and when you then receive your passport back it's got a visa printed in it so yeah make sure you've got your passport your ds 2019 is the form that comes from america and is signed it's got all kind of like the date you'll be working in america where you'll be working your personal details very important um you also need to take like i've mentioned the confirmation booking of you actually doing your ds 160 um and this will be the thing like i've said it'll have the aa and then it'll have a long number and it will have your photo on as well because it's a photo that they then use for your visa this is something i've had people ask me as well don't worry if when you're trying to do your application you can't upload a photo. The past two years I've been, ugh, it's such a faff trying to upload the right size photo, the right quality, and every time mine's been rejected. Don't worry if you can't upload one because it will let you carry on without uploading one and you can just print one off. When you get to London, um, you can go in one of those photo booth things and there's actually an option for a US visa photo to be taken. And I'm pretty sure they do have these photo booths in the embassy anyway because sometimes you get there and the photo doesn't meet the quality standards and they need you to take another one. So don't stress about that because honestly, the amount of hassle I've had with those websites and trying to upload a photo, it's so frustrating. Um, but yeah, so those are three things you need. You'll also need, I think it's just service receipt, which is just a proof of a payment thing that your agency sought for you anyway. So I've just been and grabbed my documents just because i knew i had a like checklist for what you need to take to your visa and it will be looking something like this it's gonna be backwards i don't think you're gonna see it but your agency will send you something that's just literally a checklist so i remember taking this and I actually sat and checked everything off 
because I was like, right, I'm making sure I have everything. So, like I already said, passport, your DS2019, your printed copy of your DS160, your service fee receipt, which literally just comes as like a piece of paper like this that your agency sends you, printed confirmation of your appointment date and time. Um, this isn't like, this isn't something, a lot of these things aren't some things that they'll check, but they'll want you to have just in case. Um, so make sure you've got it anyway. But yeah, just confirmation of when your appointment is, confirmation of your visa payment. Again, these are things I don't think I've ever been asked for anyway but just take it passport photo just take an extra one even if to be fair i'll probably go and print another one out anyway when i get to london just on the off chance that they turn around and say mine doesn't meet the standards so i just have one anyway and then the last thing i've had a few people ask me about this actually and it's supporting evidence to show that you're going to come back to the uk after camp and again that's something i've never actually been asked for at any of my visa appointments they just kind of ask you i remember the, the guy at the embassy just said, oh, are you coming back to the UK? And I was like, yeah, I've got a job lined up. And just if you've got something, say, like proof of you moving into an, like student accommodation or you just like your uni offer, because obviously they'll know that you need to be back at uni or like a uni timetable or a job offer, even if it's a part time job. Because I always think I'm like, oh, we well, could just show you a return flight, but you're not supposed to have booked your flight before you've got your visa. So unless you have and you've got that obviously as proof that you're returning home. Um, but yeah, any little things like that take just more for peace of mind. Like I say, I've never been asked for actual proof that I'm coming back. Just they'll kind of like ask, oh, what have you got? What have you got set up for September? What plans? Like, what are, you, what are your plans? That's all they're going to ask just to make sure that you obviously have the intention of coming back home um, after you've worked at camp. So, yeah, that's your checklist. Make sure you've got everything. Take it in like a little wallet. Um, just so you've got everything all in one place. You know where everything is. <laughs> You're not going to be stressing. So say it's then the day of your appointment. You get to London. Um, I'll insert a picture of the embassy building. It is such an incredible building. Like, it's so cool. I'll try and get there. Well, because obviously you're travelling from normally central London. I'd say it's probably a good, I want to say like 20 minutes. And then you have to walk from whatever tube station it is to the embassy. Leave yourself a good, like, hour and a bit getting there. Um, like, my appointment this time is at 10.30, I think. And... The train I'm going to get is going to get me into London for about eight-ish. And I'll, honestly, I'll probably head straight over there. Um, only thing is there's not a lot for you to do around the embassy. Um, there's a couple of restaurants, um, like a co-op, I'm pretty sure. So there's not much for you to do to be able to sit and wait. And if the weather is as bad as it has been, it's going to be horrible to wait outside. Both years I've been, I've been so lucky that the weather's been lovely. We've just been able to like sit outside, just wait for our appointment. Try and leave yourself as much time because you don't want to... You don't want to be stressing that you're going to miss your appointment, but also don't get there ridiculously early and try and um, just get in the queue and go in earlier because you will not be able to go in before your actual appointment time. So, but yeah, I remember the first time I went <laughs> to the embassy, there was the biggest queue of people that I've ever seen. I remember being there, I was like, this can't be it. I was like, there's no way because my friend that I'd spoke to that had been before, she said that she was in and out in about 20 minutes and I was like, well, this does not look like a 20 minute queue. And this was before we even got into the building. And it turns out, I've mentioned this before as well. If you can try and book as early of an appointment as possible, because my appointment was about 3 p.m. And it was just so busy. And yeah, so once you're in, I'll probably say the first time I went, I was in there for about two and a half hours. Um, second time was pretty similar. I had, again, a similar appointment time. It was in the afternoon. So this time, the fact that I'm going at half 10, I'm hoping that it's going to be a little bit quicker, a little bit smoother. So yeah, you've just got to the embassy. I'm just kind of like visioning how it was when I went. So yeah, imagine you've just got to the embassy. You're not going to be able to go up any earlier than your time, but you'll find you'll have a load of people in the queue and then there'll be people sat waiting for their time to be called. So once they call your time, you'll then get into the queue. Someone will come down the queue and check all your uh, papers that you've got them anyway. So they'll initially check all of that there. They'll go through, you go through an initial thing. They'll stamp something. I can't remember what they stamp. Then you get your bag searched. You can't take big bags into the embassy. Um, you can take like a handbag size. Like think of like what you can take on a plane. Just like little hand luggage that goes under your seat. You can't take anything bigger than that. Um, you won't be able to, they just won't let you take it in. You'll have your bag searched. You'll go through to the embassy. Um, they'll give you, they give you some sort of leaflet to start with um, just to like, let you know your rights working in America, all of that kind of thing. Then you'll take an elevator up to quite a high floor. I remember it being quite high up the um, like visa embassy floor. And then you'll sit and you'll actually get given like um, kind of like a little 
ticket stub thing that has a number on um and that's just your number and when you get called you'll go up into whatever line you need to go to like i say it is all very straightforward the building when i first saw it <laughs> looks quite intimidating because it's it's just massive but everyone that you're there with is doing the exact same thing like they're all getting a j1 visa to go and work at camp so get talking to someone in the queue like honestly it's going to make the process so much easier if you've got someone to chat to and you've got a friend there yeah so you just wait for your number to then be called you'll go up to someone first and they'll check your documents and they'll check your photo meets all the standards it's all right they'll take your fingerprints and um, take some photos of you and then you'll get all your documents back in like a different folder they'll like put it in their own fancy folder and um, then you're going to take a seat again wait for your number to be called then you'll go up to someone else i'm pretty sure it's only two people you're going to speak to and this is when they'll just ask you a few questions and um, they'll say kind of like what camp are you working at what are you going to be doing this summer what state are you working in what are your plans for when you come home literally you're probably talking to them for not even two or three minutes tops um and again it's just to kind of get an idea of what you know where you're working you know what you'll be doing this summer and you know what you're doing when you come home and then yeah they'll keep i think they only keep your passport and your 2019 think those are the only forms they keep and then anything else you just give them back and that gets kept they'll process your visa um like i say it'll get sent off processed there then it'll either be sent straight to you depending on what delivery package you've gone for or you'll have to go and pick it up and it's so cool when you get your passport back because it's literally just like a full page in your passport of like a visa has your photo in has like what dates you'll be at camp for when it was issued all of that very cool um and then you're literally good to go um and then obviously make sure you then still take all those documents with you when you go to america i think i've mentioned this in one of my other videos but i watched one girl's camp america videos and she said she forgot to take her ds 2019 when she got to america and obviously they have to cross-reference that with the visa that's in your passport. So make sure, again, <laughs> I don't know how she missed the email from her agency that said, make sure you take all these documents with you to camp. But if you want to be like me, take everything you have camp related out with you. It doesn't take up any space. Is it just a little plastic wallet with all of your pieces of paper in? And at least then you know you've got everything with you. But yeah, then when you get to the airport, um, I've mentioned this again, you'll go through like a different border control to like people that are just going on holiday like on tourist visas because they have to actually thoroughly check your visa is the right one so you'll find again like everyone in this queue is going to be doing a j1 visa going to camp and they've all got the exact same forms as you so just get talking to someone especially if you're traveling out on your own get chatting to someone because it honestly calms your nerves so much just having someone doing the exact same thing as you and you can just talk to them it just makes it easier and yeah you'll then go up to the border control agent and they'll check your passport check the visa in your passport check your documents that you need. Like I said, I think it is only your DS 2019 that they'll check at the border and you're good to go. You're through pretty quick because like I say, everything's online and on the system anyway. But yeah, make sure you've got all your documents. Just do it, please, <laughs> please. And then yeah, so you'll be through, go and collect your bags and then depending obviously what your travel situation is to get to camp. Um, I've had a few people ask me about this actually, how you get to camp and normally it's you get on a bus or a coach, depends on obviously what, city you fly into and where in america your camp is um i have to fly into new york and my camp's in pennsylvania so i have to get to port authority which is this massive massive bus station again i'll try and insert a photo so you can get an idea of what it's like you're going to buy a ticket i have to buy a ticket to go to this really little town called honesdale and it's about two and a half hours i think on the bus and then someone from camp would come and pick us up from honesdale um take us back to camp and you're literally all done and dusted you're good to go um but yeah sometimes it will be a bit different like i know last year my camp ran their own like personal coaches because of everything to do with covid they didn't want to risk everyone being like negative to test and then get on a bus with a load of people and then potentially test positive when they get there so i don't know how it's going to be this summer actually haven't heard much about it so yeah just reach out to your camp ask them what the protocol is on getting to camp you could end up meeting up with someone that's got a car and they're driving down and you'll have a lift to camp um but yeah just reach out to people make sure you know what the deal is but yeah it's literally as straightforward as that as long as you read all the info that your agency send you and you've got all the documents you're literally going to be fine um and honestly it's not as daunting as i know a lot of people have thought like a lot of people message me saying they're really worried about their visa appointment they don't know how it's going to go and honestly it's smooth sailing and you're there with hundreds of other people like there's so many people that will be there on the same day as you doing the exact same thing so like i say my top tip just get chatting to someone and ask them what camp they're working at what they're going to be doing and before you know it you've got a friend for the day 
and it might it just makes the whole process so much quicker honestly so yeah i think that's all i'm gonna do for this video literally just talk about visas because i know i've had a lot of people ask about different things if you've got any questions that i might have missed out or anything that you're still a bit unsure of please drop me a message comment down below or message me on instagram i love responding to all of your messages and i've had so many lovely people get in touch with me and just just talk about camp but it gets me so excited so yeah stay tuned for my vlog day of my visa appointment um again i'm just gonna talk you through like show you what documents i'm taking show you what i've got what the embassy's like um like i said i won't be able to obviously vlog inside but yeah just gives you a bit of an insight on the day and how it's gonna go um so yeah thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video